Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our online virtual BCC Experience BCC event. Um, apologies for the, the, the last minute change. Um, Microsoft has been reporting some issues with uh, MS Teams and their uh, online uh, 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 Office 365 products. So uh, we, we've had to uh, make a quick change over to Zoom. I hope uh, that wasn't too much of an inconvenience. Um, I'll start off by first introducing myself. Uh, my name is Mike. I'm, uh, I'll be the moderator for today. Um, I'm also a, a BCC staff member. We're really excited to have you join us. Uh, if you uh, need a sign language interpreter, please let us know and uh, we'll see if we can find someone to, to join us to provide that service. Uh, I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are on the traditional and unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples, the tra traditional territories of the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. This session is an opportunity for you to learn about the technology programs that we offer at BCC. For today's agenda, we have a number of program representatives who will talk about the respective programs for about two to three minutes. We also have an advisor, should you have any general questions. Um, we are expecting uh, an advisor from the um, Indigenous Support Group to join us. Uh, she hasn't joined us yet and I, I hope uh, she hasn't uh, gotten lost in the transition over to Zoom, but uh, hopefully she'll be able to join us. And um, finally, uh, we'll follow up those introductions with a, um, a question and answer period. Um, we know that uh, th that is probably the most valuable uh, part of this session. So we want to give you as much opportunity to answer those questions and uh, for us to answer, or sorry, ask those questions and for us to answer them. So um, before we begin, can I ask the program representatives and advisors to quickly introduce yourselves? Tell us your name, the, the program you represent and your role with the college. So maybe I'll start with you, Bruce. Sure, Hi. thanks. Thank you very much everyone for coming. My name is uh, Bruce McGarvey. I'm the department head of the CAD and BIM Technologies Department. We have uh, architectural, civil st structural, uh, steel construction modeling certificates, a uh, BIM diploma program, and also a short certificate in CAD technicians. That's it, thanks. Okay. Um... How about now, uh, Sunny? Hello everyone, today I'm representing Computer System Technology Department and I'm also Program Assistant there. Perfect. Um, Sid? Good afternoon everyone, my name is Sid Kuller and I'm the Program Coordinator of Technology and Trades Programs in Continuing Studies. Uh, I'll be representing the Networking Technology IT Operations Professional and the new Microsoft Azure courses over here. Perfect. Uh, Jennifer and Mary? Uh, Michael, there's an ASL interpreter request in the chat. Um, I am Jennifer Kelly, and I am the Science Department Head um, at VCC, um, and the VRAR program is uh, housed in our department. Hi, I'm Mary, I'm coming to you from Vancouver Film School. Um, I'm the program head for the VRAR program at the VFS. So I'm here to talk more about the new lab with BCC. Okay, th thanks for letting me know about the uh, sign interpretation um, request. I'll just submit that to our team He's here. He's here, there's somebody here oh, already. Is she? Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> but just um, Ladon, if you can, actually I'll type it in. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, just let them know that uh, they can focus um, the, the screen onto the uh, sign interpreter. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I did forget to mention one, one point. Uh, oops, sorry. Um, I'd like to let everyone know that this meeting is being recorded. Um, so if, you, if there's a question or answer that you've missed, uh, we will make the video available on our website at uh, vcc.ca slash experience. Um, if you have any questions, 
uh, we do have a question and answer period. Uh, please feel free to submit your questions in our chat and uh, we'll do our best to answer them um, in orderly fashion. Oops, uh, someone's... Okay. Okay, uh, why don't I turn things over to uh, Bruce uh, for Kat and Bim. If you could say uh, a, about a brief, maybe two or three minutes about your program. I'd be happy to. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, hello again, everyone, and thank you for taking the time out of your day to come to our uh, virtual event here for uh, Experience VCC. Uh, my name is Bruce McGarvey, and I am uh, an instructor and also currently the department head um, I graduated from this very program. I worked in a structural engineering consulting firm for many years, lots of different capacities as a pro pro program lead and a, and a head drafter and BIM modeler before I came to the, uh, before I came to the, um, the college. Uh, just so you know, if you miss anything uh, in my presentation and, uh, or have any questions, we are holding an info session next week on uh, Wednesday the 14th at 3 p.m. and it will be on Zoom. Uh, a little background about VCC. Uh, it was formerly called uh, Vancouver Vocational Institute, established in 1949. And the drafting department was one of the original programs at the college. We've been here ever since. Uh, we are now called the CAD and BIM department. So what is CAD and what is BIM? So a lot of people, most people know what CAD is, C-A-D. It's an acronym for Computer Aided Drafting. Uh, BIM is not as widely known. BIM is an acronym for Building Information Modeling. So, uh, so what do you think when you think of drafting? Uh, in today's uh, war, uh, technology and industry, we create the 3D models and technical drawings for the construction industry. Uh, we work in an office environment and we work closely with architects, engineers, designers, and fabricators. Work right on the design team with them. For our programs, we have three certificate programs. Uh, there are 10 months in duration. Uh, there's two months of basic uh, drafting. Uh, we call it the common core, which is common to all the certificates. And then uh, eight months of a specialty, whether you go into architectural or civil and structural or into uh, steel construction modeling, which used to be called steel detail. We also have a diploma program, so you would come back for a second year, and, um, and that's more about integrated 3D models. You take a second specialty, and uh, it's going through the accreditation process right now, national accreditation, so it'll be accredited through, across the country, and which is also recognized by the provincial accreditation body, ASTTBC. We also have a short certificate program. For, it's only 14 weeks in duration. Same first nine weeks of basic drafting that we do six weeks as residential plans. For the architectural technician, you cover stuff like construction drawing reading, uh, single and multifamily building layouts, building details, office layouts, con uh, commercial buildings. You use um, software like AutoCAD, Revit, SketchUp, Escape, Enscape. For the civil uh, and structural technician, you do an industrial site layout, some uh, road alignment, road design, intersection detailing, uh, learn something about steel structures, how they're laid out, um, found, uh, concrete foundations, ground floor systems, suspended structures. We use uh, Revit structures and also do our uh, AutoCAD and Civil 3D. Uh, steel construction modeling, formerly known as steel detailing. <clears throat> That's for the steel fabrication industry. So um, steel properties, square framing, heavy duty software and the like. Um, so the classes are, are small, maximum 18 students, full time days start in September. Certificates go till June. The diploma second year finishes in April. Um, so we have lots of all our instructors are industry professionals with at least eight years of construction. Uh, of experience working in the field. So remember, if you have any more questions after this, uh, uh, you we are having an info session next week. Uh, you can sign up uh, at the VCC main webpage in the info session panel on the main page. So thanks very much. Great, thanks so much, Bruce.
Uh, we'll turn things over to uh, Sania now for computer systems technology. Thank you, Michael. So hello everyone once again. My name is Ksenia and I'm program assistant in computer system technology department. So CST program is a two year full time diploma program combines uh, computer system theory with hands on practical experience in software development. In this program open graduation, you will be able to achieve four software goals, which are generic software engineering fundamentals, mobile application development, internet and web development and IT project management as well. Uh, thus, if you wish to obtain employment in the IT technology industry as a mobile application programmer, computer programmer, and network administrators, then computer system technology program will be the right choice for you. Also, starting September 2020, we did some changes in our program. Now students can study not only full-time, but also part-time as well but you will have to complete the program with, uh, within a maximum of five years. It's a great opportunity for those who is working or would like to work and study at the same time. Uh, we are also planning to have the information session in November. Uh, we haven't scheduled the date yet, but you can check the um, updates on VCC website or social media platforms like uh, Facebook, Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sanya. Uh, we'll now, oops, hand things over to Sid. Thanks, Michael. Uh, hi again, everyone. I'm Sid, and I'm here to talk about uh, three different uh, programs and courses. Uh, the Networking Technology Certificate, the Information Technology Operations Professional Certificate, and our new partnership with Microsoft on their cloud computing platform, the Azure. So uh, if you already, uh, you, you already are aware of the importance of uh, information technology, and if you think about it over the last eight months, uh, the one piece of infrastructure that everyone is relying on to get things done uh, whether it's to work or to learn or to teach or to play or to pay bills or to shop, that's the information technology infrastructure, which is the backbone for that supports digital communication. And I'm sure that you will agree that the uh, importance of uh, the IT infrastructure and maintaining it, it's only going to increase in the future. So uh, what could make you a great fit for pursuing a career in networking technology or information technology operations professional. Uh, one of the key things which uh, we feel that makes students succeed in this uh, path is to do hands-on work. So if you love doing hands-on work, you like to figure out uh, things and solutions, and you like to troubleshoot, you get excited by working with computers and network infrastructure. Uh, those are some of the things which will make you really love this uh, career path. And also, uh, I should mention, uh, I've been hearing time and again from employers and our instructors also that it's, it's very uh, important to have teamwork and communication skills uh, because as an IT professional, you would be interacting with clients and your team members. Uh, also, being a lifelong le learner is, is really essential. Technology, as we know, changes rapidly and you want to be on top of what's happening in the industry. And uh, also want to just highlight how uh, technology is a growing sector in British Columbia. Some of you, or may, all of you may know that Amazon recently announced plans to hire another 3,000 tech workers. Uh, likewise, Microsoft has made substantial investments in Canada with their uh, first Canadian Azure availability zone and express route in Vancouver. Uh, don't know if, uh, don't worry if you don't know about what Azure availability zones are. Some of our Azure courses talk about that. So there is, uh, in terms of job openings, there is over 2,700 jobs projected for just computer network technicians over the next 10 years. So where do these programs fit in? Uh, the networking technology program and the IT operations pro, uh, professional programs, these are both certificate programs and you can take up to two years to complete it. They are very flexible and uh, the tuition is also very affordable. Classes are often in the evenings, 
or on Saturdays, and you have plenty of completion time, uh, which means that you can continue to work uh, while you learn. And the best part, uh, which a lot of our graduates and students, they love, is that there's no commitment that's necessary. You only pay for the courses that you take. If you want, you can take one course for professional development or to prepare for industry certification exams. Uh, or you can take them all and graduate with a certificate. The choice is yours. I also want to give a shout out to our amazing instructors who have years and years of industry experience and they continue to work in this field every day. Uh, what that means is that the knowledge that they share with uh, the students is up to date with the industry trends. And last year's survey results show that 100% of our students were satisfied or very satisfied with the education that they received. Uh, lastly, on the Microsoft Azure uh, thing, I'm excited to, to share with you that we have partnered with Microsoft to offer multiple trainings for their leading edge cloud computing platform, and it's called Microsoft Azure. Uh, as Canadians, uh, there are statistics which indicate that we are spending uh, so much on cloud services and they are predicted to grow by 77% over the next few years. However, the challenge is that there is not enough cloud trained IT professionals and there's a scarcity of them and there's a large labor market gap uh, that's becoming critical. Uh, just before the info, this uh, event, I searched for uh, the word Azure on a LinkedIn job search and it showed me over 440 job results. So that's an indication of what the demand is out there to have a cloud computing certification or uh, competency in Microsoft Azure. So the Microsoft Azure courses are individual courses and these are mapped to the Microsoft uh, learning objectives, which means that they will help you prepare for the Microsoft certification exams. Uh, feel free to check them out. There is a whole list of courses that we are currently offering and new ones are being added. Uh, you can go to vcc.ca forward slash Microsoft and that will give you to get you to the landing page over there. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me in the chat over here or drop by at one of our upcoming info sessions. There's an info session on networking technology uh, next month and there is one for Microsoft Azure in a few weeks time. Thank you. Great, thanks so much, Sid. Uh, just a, a quick reminder, um, I, I put in the chat, uh, when you're asking questions in the chat, it would be really helpful if you indicated the program that you're interested in or inquiring about. Thanks so much. Okay, um, I'll hand things over to Jennifer and Mary now. Thanks, Mike. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm here from Vancouver Film School uh, to talk about this brand new joint diploma program that we have with VCC. Um, it's super exciting. Uh, the program has been run twice now at uh, Vancouver Film School. We just graduated our second intake um, and the program with VCC just started this September. Um, it's a 16 month program that starts at VCC for the first four months, um, doing all of the introductory courses, intro to programming, intro to game engines, intro to asset creation, uh, and a few other courses, followed by an eight month, very intense um, program at VFS, uh, where students will get to take the skills they learn from VCC and apply it to real world um, applications that they want to do. Uh, so it's pretty open what kind of projects come out of this program. Um, we would like students to come in with an idea of what they want to work on, but some examples that the students have worked on um, span from creating a series of panic inducing mini games in VR to creating um, chef training in VR um, or an, uh, uh, an AR app that shows people uh, the good restaurants in town and it's all mapped to the location and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'll share the project's uh, landing page on the website uh, on, in the chat so everyone can take a look. Um, so you can see all of the different types of projects that uh, the students get to work on. In the second term at VFS, there is a client project as well. Um, so within the program, students get to actually work with a real world client on a real project, um, get mentored through that so that when they graduate, they can already have work experience. Um, three out of the four client projects that we've had um, have actually led to paid work for the students. Um, one of the client projects with, was with the Faculty of Medicine at UBC, and that one is actually going to be used in curriculum. Um, 
another project that was done this last uh, intake um, got awarded an EPIC mega grant. Um, and so they're going to be turning that into a bigger project as well. Um, so that's the eight months at VFS. And then it all ends back at VCC with a four month practicum, full time practicum. So more work experience. Um, VRAR is booming right now, as many of you can probably see, especially with everybody going remote. Um, there, there was at least 250 companies in Vancouver alone um, in the VRAR world. Uh, it's probably growing. Uh, it's been really exciting working on this program for the last two years. Uh, and I'm really excited to, to answer any questions that you might have about the, the program. Thank you. Great. Th thanks so much, Mary. Uh, Jennifer, do you have anything to add to that or are you good? Uh, I think Mary covered it. Thank you, but okay. I'm here for questions. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, I'll hand things over to Domingo, who can talk about uh, academic advising. Hi, um, thank you for um, joining this um, amazing event. Um, I'm also learning a lot from uh, the um, from all of from all of you. Anyways, um, I'm one of the six academic advisors at Vancouver Community College. So if you if you want to apply to any of these programs, um, I um, strongly suggest that to, to book an appointment so uh, we can see um, what you have. When I say what you have, so we're going to look at your transcripts. Uh, we would just want to make sure that you um, have all the requirements, uh, such as prerequisites and all that, because we want you to uh, succeed in your intended program while studying at VCC. So, um, the best way to connect with us is by phone. Um, please call 604-871-7000, and I'm pretty sure Michael will provide you with that information. So 604-871-7000, press 2. You can book a, a phone appointment with us uh, for half an hour. Um, we also provide Zoom advising. And um, Lately, we have a drop-in session from 2 to 4 p.m. And it's actually uh, from Mondays to Fridays. I thought it's only four days a week, but apparently it's five days a week now. So it's 2 to 4, and that's for, um, for only 15 minutes. So anyways, uh, the other things that we provide you is, of course, to, uh, if you need assistance with financial aid, um, you want to apply for a student loan and all that, we can help you with that as well. And if you have some um, other issues like your um, academic issues, for example, we do have counseling and we can assist you with, with that as well. So yeah, well, I look forward to um, meeting each and every one of you. Thank you. Great, thanks, Bob. Um, Angela, do, do you want to speak about some uh, international education support services? Um, yeah, hello everyone. Um, my name is Angela and I'm from the International Education Department and um, this is a great opportunity for you to ask questions about specific uh, program information, support services within the program area, um, job outlooks, and you know what kind of textbooks are used. So ask away. If you have any additional questions regarding how to apply to VCC as an international student and um, what kind of other support services are available, uh, please let me know or email us at study at vcc.ca and we can give you more information. Um, I did have a presentation earlier this morning and I think some of you might have been there already, um, but we have a international info session available a few weeks later. So go to our website um, at vcc.ca and then um, you can register for that particular event to get more detailed information about international students applying to VCC. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Angela. I'll just include that in the chat, um, the link to the international website. Okay, um, moving along. Um, unfortunately, Tony Gladstone isn't uh, here to join us, but uh, I, I do want to let everyone know, um, if you're an Indigenous student, uh, we do offer a wealth of uh, support services um, if you'd like to learn more about that, please contact the, their office at indigenous at bcc.ca. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, Bruce had mentioned uh, about income, upcoming info sessions and Sid mentioned uh, another upcoming info session about networking technology. If you visit our website at bcc.ca slash info, you'll see uh, all the upcoming sessions 
uh, that we had in the next two weeks. So do check that uh, website um, on a uh, regular basis and I'll include that in the chat as well. Um, oh yeah, the, the social media channels that uh, CADBIM also uh, offers that uh, you can follow along at BCC CADBIM, all one word. Okay, um, we'll now switch gears over to the, the questions and answer period. I can see that uh, some of you have been actively asking questions in the chat. Um, feel free to ask any questions that you may have. Uh, we'll do our best to answer it. And again, um, just a reminder that this video is recorded and we will make it available on our website at bcc.ca slash experience. So if you do miss a question and answer, uh, it'll be available for you to refer to at a later date. Um, one more quick reminder, if you could include the program that you're interested or inquiring about, uh, that would help us uh, determine uh, who's the best person to answer your question. Anyone? Don't be shy. <laughs> um, maybe I can. Oh, I've got a question. Oh, sure. Yeah, Tim, go ahead. <laughs> I have, uh, I have a few questions too that I can ask, but uh, yeah. Uh, so, well, um, I wonder if uh, the uh, various uh, program areas could speak briefly uh, just uh, uh, about the, uh, the, the, the job market, the job, the current uh, job outlook. That is an excellent question. I, that was one of my questions I was going to ask too. So um, yeah, if um, the program uh, representatives, if you could speak about that, that would be great. Um, yeah, um, Bruce, you wanna speak since I sort of captured the floor there? Yes, absolutely, I'll jump in. <clears throat> uh, so um, WorkBC has identified uh, uh, CAD drafting modeling technicians of all the varieties, be it architectural, mechanical, civil, structural, uh, very high. Uh, about 2,600 are gonna be required over the next uh, 10 years. Um, so, you know, and VCC and the other colleges can't produce that many, so it's going to be good. Uh, historically, uh, over the last five years, our numbers have been 86% uh, have found full-time employment in their field of study within four months of graduation. Uh, and, and some, uh, many, many have jobs before they even finish, before they graduate. Okay, that sounds really encouraging. Question here about the networking. So the networking qualifications does not require any previous experience with IT. So if you want to apply, you can you can with no previous experience. I, I think that's a question for you, Sid. Uh, yes. Uh, so that's correct. Uh, the networking technology and the IT operations professional do not have any program specific admission requirements. These programs are designed for those who want to get into the IT sector, into the IT field. So whether you want to pursue your work as a computer network technician, move over to administrator role, uh, get into server or security or whatnot, there's a lot of career pathways that you can take on, but these are designed to give you an entry level, a good strong foundation into uh, IT. So yeah, a lot of times we have students who have no previous experience with uh, computers. Uh, I mean, they have an interest in computers. Of course, you do, do need to have an inclination to work with computers and technology, but uh, you do not necessarily need to have any IT experience. Uh, you will find oftentimes that there are also uh, students in the classes who are working in IT who take these courses one-off for professional development because maybe they want to uh, reskill or get some updated knowledge. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I had a prospective student. I had a student who actually he ended up enrolling in a course. He had taken IT courses more than a decade ago, but he wanted to take it again because he wanted to just uh, upgrade uh, his skill set. Thank you. I, I hope that answered your, your question. Do, does anyone want to speak about um, the job market, just the continuing on that thing. I have a quick question. Um, 
maybe for Sid and um, regarding, so we have a computer systems technology diploma um, and also Sid, your, your area offers um, networking technology courses and programs. What is the difference between the two? So uh, what I can tell uh, for our programs, our, our certificate programs, so definitely they are shorter in length. Uh, the computer, uh, the networking technology and the IT operations professional, they are more on the networking side of things. Uh, whereas the CST, the computer system technology and uh, Ksenia, feel free to correct me if I'm uh, uh, mistaken. Though CST program is more has more of a software development uh, portion, web development, app development, and software development, whereas in the networking technology and IT, there is no programming that's involved. There might be a little bit of scripting in the IT operations professional, but uh, there's no programming certainly that's involved. That's a good question, Angela. I, I was interested in that myself, so thanks for asking that. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Sid. Uh, yeah, so Sid provided you with the correct information also. As I mentioned, CST is a full-time diploma program, uh, which actually contains of uh, 100 credits. And if you add like 20, it's going to be a bachelor's degree for you. So, and uh, we're actually implementing bachelor degree. Hopefully, we can launch it next year. So, yeah. Great, thanks, Daniel. So and uh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I, I have a, a question for uh, a VCC International, uh, Angela. <laughs> uh, so, uh, can you could could you speak? Uh, could you tell us a little bit? Uh, explain uh, the uh, the general uh, admission requirements for international students for the for English. Um, and I, and uh, maybe um, the specific one for CAD and BIM, I've pulled it up on our website too. So, I mean, I, you don't have to have everything all memorized for all the different departments, but international students, the admission requirement for English. Thank you, Tim. Um, so program requirements, including English, vary by program. But I think um, for the majority of the programs here, I think almost all of them have the same English requirements. <laughs> so there's no competition here. Um, the English requirements can be met by various types of assessments or courses, depending on where students are coming from. If students have been educated in an English speaking country, such as Canada, where English is the primary um, medium of instruction, as well as the official language, then we can look at their grade 12 English grades to confirm if they can meet um, the English requirement without doing any additional testing. If not, uh, especially for international students who are um, in non-English speaking countries, there are different test, um, external tests options available, such as IELTS, TOEFL. We have recently also accepted Duolingo for the entire 2021 academic year. Um, because IELTS and TOEFL centers might be closed in some countries due to the pandemic. So you can, you can use those um, options to, to meet the English requirements. If you are an international student and you need English upgrading, there are also different ways to upgrade English. Um, for all of the programs here um, that, are, that are represented here, conditional admission is available. If you don't meet the English requirement but you want to apply first, hold your program C while waiting to meet English requirements, that is also a possibility. So in terms of IELTS, it is 6.5 overall with no band less than 6.0. Duolingo, it is 105 uh, or English 12. Um, the, the grades might vary a little bit depending on the programs, but I think for um, CAD and BIM, it is a passing grade. Thank you, Tim. Sure, you bet. Thank you, Angela. Um, I, I see a question about uh, the civil structure technician certificate and CAD and BIM diploma. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, I was just trying to respond by typing, but it can be faster to <laughs> respond by uh, uh, speaking. So the civil structural technician certificate and CAD and BIM diploma, 
the, the next start date isn't until September 2021. So how, you know, uh, can they get started sooner? And is there any advantage to taking this short certificate in April? And I was just going to say that, well, uh, uh, okay, so it could be an advantage to start sooner uh, uh, is, is simply one. Another one is take a short certificate and, and try it out and see if you like it with a short certificate rather than this whole long, you know, lengthy, uh, uh, you know, two-year diploma. Uh, but really, I think the main advantage is that once you take that short certificate, uh, then uh, you can you can sort of ladder into uh, level two uh, 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 of your studies uh, in the diploma um, in November. Uh, so it's a it's a it's a uh, a good way to um, uh, it's a good introduction uh, to the whole uh, diploma uh, program. And yeah, so lots of our students do that. Uh, and it seems to work for them. I think maybe they, they get a break in between, which allows them to maybe work and, and uh, save some more money for their uh, future studies. Great, thanks, Tim. I, I hope that answered your question very Claude. Anyone else have any other questions? Um, I wonder if uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll pick on um, the VAR group. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what um, what uh, a blended uh, teaching and learning method looks like now with uh, COVID uh, as a, a, a pandemic that is occurring right now? Um, yeah, so for our um, the last intake, we actually switched to entirely online. The students got to bring home their computers and their headsets, um, and everything was done remotely through Zoom. Um, they learned a lot of extra skills because of this, <laughs> which is good because a lot of the companies are now working remotely um, and have been for a while. Um, and there is a trend towards that in many different fields, including like the design field and the gaming field and all of that stuff. So that was really interesting. Um, for January, we're still trying to figure out what to do, but people will have to be in the same time zone. So we are asking students to come to Vancouver. Um, it will be a hybrid model in January, but it will be based out of Vancouver, um, just because time zones can get quite tricky if it's online. Um, but yeah, that's the plan. Right now, the VCC portion is online, though, I believe. It's running now, so. What about the equipment, the VR equipment? Is, is that provided, or will students have to provision that themselves? Uh, it's all provided by VFS. Yeah, they get they get a computer and a headset as well um, for the duration of the program, um, and then they have to return it. <laughs> Some of them wish they didn't, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I can see um, Angela. Thank you for for posting that link for the the tech job growth. Um, let's see here. Uh, can anyone speak about um, just what, what does the studies look like? Can, can a student study part-time in a program? So maybe if I can go first, Michael, because sure. of the mention of part-time. So the IT operations professional and the networking technology and also the Microsoft Azure courses, they're all part-time. They can be taken part-time. They are designed, keeping in mind the busy schedule for many of our students who have family commitments or might be working full-time or part-time at, at a job. So uh, you have up to two years to complete your certificate. And as I said earlier, you do not necessarily have to complete it, but a lot of students do end up getting their certificates. Uh, but you can uh, take courses, take courses in any order as long as you meet the course prerequisites. So certainly there is a uh, part-time, uh, part-time is the main goal for courses in continuing studies that we offer. And uh, classes are often scheduled uh, in the evenings uh, from six to 9 p.m. Uh, and or on Saturdays daytime. So we understand the need for students to work uh, while they study, while they learn. So certainly for these three programs. Thanks, Ed. I, I can see also uh, from the VR AR group um, that there's no part-time option available for that program. Not for now. 
Okay, good to know. Thanks. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and for international students, they have to study full time. That's part yes. of the, the requirement to hold a study permit. Okay. Very important to know. <laughs> yes, um, I believe I can also speak about the CST part time, or I would um, uh, say it's flexibility in the program. So, for example, term contains of six courses but students have option of taking only three of them or four, which also gives this uh, kind of flexibility for international students as well, as I'm aware of, and Angela maybe can confirm, they have to maintain nine credits per term uh, in order to consider as full-time student. So you're kind of still a full-time student, but at the same time you're taking less courses, which sometimes can be very overwhelming so we have already in our program international students for example who don't take uh, five courses per term but they take three or four great thanks Dania uh, Domingo do you want to maybe talk about the admission process or Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so in just in case if you, any one of you wants to um, apply to the program, I always, we always recommend to apply to your intended program. So go to the program website and that's going to bring you to the um, um, B, Ed Planner BC where you're going to choose the, um, the intake day. Um, just so you know, when you apply to the program, um, you're, you're applying to an actual intake, but however, that doesn't mean that you're going to start on um, that particular intake day just because, you know, seat offering to any program at Vancouver Community College is first come first qualified. So it's not first come first serve, but first come first qualified. So um, if say if, if you have um, if you want to apply to the program and you're still upgrading, you can still apply to the program. That should not stop you from applying. Um, I always say please apply to the program and send your documents to ro at vcc.ca. Again. Um, um, However, we're not going to offer you a seat again, not until. Um, I'm not really so sure about the, the VRAR because they have a separate um, admission requirements, I believe. Um, can you confirm that, please? Jen, they... I'll let you answer this one. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, you were just wondering about the admission requirements for VRAR? Yes. Um, yeah, so I can post the link um, in the um, in the chat here so that students can look right at that. Uh oh, what happened? Mm -hmm. My Zoom just froze. Sorry. <laughs> Come back to me. <laughs> I will get this posted for you. Yeah, I'll also I can post the link. Um, VFS also has a landing page with a bunch of like FAQs that students might ask about the joint program. Um, if you apply for the VCC joint program, your application automatically gets passed on to VFS. And as long as you have like a 2.3 GPA at uh, VCC, then you're automatically accepted into the eight month program at VFS. Um, but as far as the like details for, for VCC um, applications, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but um, I can, I'm sorry, it's working again. Um, yeah. So it's, um, it's a, Grade 12 graduation, English 12 with a C plus or the equivalent. So um, I'm not good with all of the uh, international equivalents, um, but luckily there are people like Angela who are. Um, English language proficiency, same thing, English 12, C plus, uh, pre-calculus 12 um, uh, with a B or equivalent. And so those are the um, specific requirements for VRAR. And I know people get grumpy about the pre-calculus one. Um, I sat in on a little bit of the um, introduction to game engines, uh, game engines or asset creation. It was asset creation um, and that it's mathy. There's no getting around it. There's math involved there. You got to do mm -hmm. some math to, uh, to make all of that work. So mm -hmm. I'll post that link. Okay, thanks Jennifer. Does anyone have any? Can, can, I, can I add um, something? So just in case if you want to apply to any of the programs and you need to do some upgrading, um, you need to talk to us as well because we can provide you with all the information. 
for upgrading. For instance, um, you don't have the English 12 um, with the appropriate marks. You can take an English test or you can upgrade whatever you have. Um, uh, or for example, if you studied um, a um, university level English, and that of course will supersede the uh, English 12 that we require to um, um, some of the programs. So, so again, um, upgrading, yes, we do have, and upgrading at VCC is free, which is really, really good. Um, and we, we, you have two options if you want to upgrade. You have the class base, which is um, four months, that's one term, or self-pace, which you can finish at your own pace pretty much. Um, right now, these courses, because of COVID, um, they're obviously delivered online. There you go. Thanks, Bingo. That, that's really... Uh... You know, said something as you're talking about the admission requirements. So um, one, one of the admission requirements is the program is math also for calculus 12. Mm. <laughs> it is a minimum C grade. Yeah. However, uh, CST, like we in CST, we offer in-house online math assessment. Mm -hmm. In case you don't have math or you need the upgrade, but I know that some uh, courses take um, very long, like it takes time. So yes, if you don't meet the math requirement, you can try this uh, um, in-house math assessment. When you say in-house, is it in your department or assessment? Our assessment? Yes, in department I actually oh, okay. conducted. Okay. Yes, we gotcha. do the same with the English. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. okay. Really or great. you can you can do the math assessment via, um, through the VCC assessment center as well. As I am aware, and now they're operating it online. Yeah. Um, yeah, right now you can take you can take the um, you can take the um, ass math assessments in person, but it's very limited. Obviously, you still have to come to VCC, um, you know, observing safety protocol. And if you do want to take the math assessment in person, please email assessments at vcc.ca. Currently, we we're only providing um, uh, in-person assessments only for math at this time. But keep on checking the website, I'm sorry, webpage for the assessments because who, who knows, we may be offering um, assessments in person as well for uh, reading and writing uh, or Canadian language benchmark placement test, which is actually a, um, a proof of English language proficiency for the CAD and um, BIM programs. Thank you. Thanks so much, Don. Mm -hmm. Uh, question about the technology certificate. Um, oh, inquiring about math prerequisites. That seems to be a, a hot topic <laughs> with math. Yeah, uh, you need to have a PhD in, uh, in uh, <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, you're correct uh, that there is uh, no math prerequisites. So it's, it's, it's very foundational level uh, entry uh, into IT field and there is a need for you to be able to understand the concepts, but uh, there is no math prerequisites. So anybody can basically join. Um, I just want to add something to that. Thank you for mentioning, by the way. Um, so some programs and courses are offered by continuing studies. And, and if that is the case, you really, really need to connect with continuing studies because they have their own sets of requirements. Um, the only time um, continuing studies, you know, prospective students come to, these, to, come to uh, academic advising is when it comes to, um, you know, proving their English language proficiency. But, um, you know, programs, courses offered by continuing studies, it's, I think it's quite seamless. Um, all you have to do is talk to the, um, do the uh, talk to the program coordinators. Thank you. Uh, great point. Thank you very much, John, for that. Yeah, you're very welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to be mindful of the time. We've got about 10 more minutes. Uh, I do have a few slides. Um, I know some of you are, are interested in the, uh, the, the waiver, the application waiver, and also the contest. So I, I do like to share that with you. Um, does anyone have any questions here? I, 
I'm sure you do. Uh, th this is your chance to to raise them, or um, as Don mentioned, uh, feel free to set up an appointment with the advising team. Uh, they offer either uh, on phone consultation or by Zoom. And also drop in. And drop in. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? No? Uh, go ahead, sorry. Mm -hmm. Michael, I was wondering if uh, you or somebody else can maybe talk a little bit about all the services that are available to the students as a VCC yes. student. Uh, that, that's one of my slides, so thank you. Th thanks for reminding me. <laughs> okay, well, um, we'll move along. And again, um, you know, we're more than happy to answer any questions you have or if you've got um, more specific uh, uh, questions to your needs, then uh, do feel free to contact one of the program coordinators or um, Dom's team in advising. Um, let me just move on now. Um, oops. So Sid mentioned about uh, services for students. We do have a wealth of uh, uh, services that are available. Uh, advising services, financial aid, I mentioned earlier about Indigenous, um, disability services, counseling services, and uh, sorry, uh, free professional tutoring. <laughs> um, if you just visit our website at vcc.ca, um, you'll see that there's a students tab and all of these links and uh, the information is available to you. Uh, as far as next steps goes, uh, we, we talked a little bit about the upcoming info sessions. Okay, thank you, Sid. <laughs> I see you're, you're rewriting. Um, yeah, uh, we talked about uh, upcoming info sessions. So do check our website at uh, bcc.ca slash info and uh, keep your eyes open. Um, we do offer them on a regular basis. Um, we mentioned this as well. Uh, feel free to contact an advisor if you visit uh, bcc.ca slash advising. Um, we have a number of ways of, uh, to interact with uh, Dom or uh, one of his team members. And if you're uh, ready to make the jump and uh, uh, ready to apply and register, uh, you can go to vcc.ca slash apply. We'd be thrilled to have you join our, our uh, family and uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, and helping you with your academic endeavors. Uh, some, someone is sending me a private message about the application waiver. So here it is. Um, this is only for domestic students only. So just keep that in mind. It is limit one one per person, and it's a $35 value. So if you go to bcc.ca slash apply, the promo code is info1020. Um, I think that's it. So um, thanks uh, everyone uh, for joining us today. Uh, have a great week and uh, please stay safe. Thank you. Okay. Bye Be safe. Now, everyone. Bye, everyone. Okay. Thank you.